Mark 11, 22nd and the 23rd verse. Mark 11, 22, if you got it, shout, I got it. And the word of the Lord says, and Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. <laughs> Truly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. This is your part. And does not doubt in his heart. But believes that he says, what he says will come to pass. Comma, that means attached to, it will be done for him. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to play checkers very quickly in this text. And I like, I like what Jesus says. He says, have faith in God. And then, because he know, he know y'all. He know y'all. He knows that the moment he says an instruction, your response is, can I? Your response is, am I able to? He says, have faith in God. Then he says a word like truly. Saying that everything after this is truth. If you needed a reminder, just in case, you need a reminder that what's coming after what I said first is not true. He says, truly. Another translation would say, surely, which secures that whatever he says next is already done. I just got to walk to it. We're losing pace in our walk to. One more time. We're losing faith in our walk. One more time for the people. We're losing faith in our walk. With every step, we should not doubt God more. Now, Pastor Bruce, that's difficult to say when it seems like the closer I get or the more precise that I follow his instructions, it seems like what should be happening should be the opposite. You're telling me to have faith in God. But the moment that I say yes, it feels like all hell breaks loose. It seems like the closer that I get to you, the tougher it gets for me to see you. Well, we got to take into account that there is an invisible enemy called Satan that seeks to devour not just your resource, but your destiny. So it makes perfect sense that not only is he a liar, he cannot tell the truth. So he says before, this is what I love about God. He'll put, he'll put you on a path to see if your faith is real or fraudulent. He says, have faith in God. Then trouble comes. Have faith in God. Then opposition shows up. Have faith in God. Mental health spikes. Have faith in God, your job laid you off. Have faith in God, 38 people in your family die. Have faith in God, you're getting 16 calls from school. Have faith in God, the money you got saved, you got to use. Have faith in God, your job is telling you to do something that you don't have any experience doing. Have faith in God. Your church is asking you to be something that you've never been in your life. Have faith in God. Here's the key to the victory. Do not doubt in your heart. Whatever a man thinketh, so is he. The problem is you're thinking in your mind and you need to be thinking in your heart. Ask me why. Because your heart is God's space. He said above all things, don't trust your heart because it is deceitful and how about this? It's wicked. So the wickedness in your heart has made you fall in love with something or somebody that is toxic to your purpose. Let me slow down. 
have faith in God. Notice he says that before he gives instruction. Because <laughs> in order for me to do what I'm going to do for you, it don't work if you don't first have faith in God. You're looking for a plan to pop. You need a plan to fall. Can I be honest today? Some of y'all too high for God to speak to. Some, some of y'all too high for him. Y'all, y'all. Pastor Bruce, what does that mean? When you talk to God like this, he's not responding. Because he's saying that you've postured yourself in prayer to be equal to me. Y'all don't believe me. It's cool. He told Jeremiah, he said, after I give you this instruction, if you want, I love the Bible. If you, lo- if you want what you, if you want what I want for you, does this make sense? If you want what I want for you, he says, go down. My next question to the believer is this. How can you stand up straight in the presence of God? Which side going to talk to me? Okay. It's the spirit over there. He says, go to, if you want to see and invoke the presence of God in your immediate presence, lay down. Y'all don't believe me? Go home today. Find whatever space, closet, bathroom. If you crazy, lay in the tub. Just don't turn the water on. Some of us, anyway. We should sweat so bad until we need a shower. We should not walk out of church with clean clothes. Y'all come to church too pretty for me. I ain't saying don't look nice. But come with work clothes on. Woo! Lord, I felt that one. Let, go in your house. Go in your room. And say, God, I'm down. <laughs> because God is a father. He's not our daddy. We'll talk later. He is our father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. What does that mean? He ain't my daddy. Because some of our fathers, our daddies left us. So he said, let me put some separation in between the two. Because when you call our father who art in heaven, you get my attention. Hallowed be his name, meaning that you're reverencing the fact that my name is different than Jerome. My name is different than Sam Middleton. My name is different than Booker T. Washington. My name is different because what your daddy could do don't even touch what I'm getting ready to do. So Patrick, what are you saying? When you pray to him, humbly submit it, put some respect on his name. Lay down because he's a father and he's holy. He's omniscient. He's sovereign. He's all-knowing. So before you lay down, he know what you're going to ask for. He just want to see if you're humble enough. If you need him enough to change your persona. If you're humble enough to change your persona. One more time. If you are humble enough to get out your character. The number one way to put up a gate in between you and God is to say, I don't do that. Don't. Because what you don't do, you won't have. The reason, again, why you're so heavy is because you won't put on the garment of praise. And that is non-negotiable. It's, it's a contract that cannot be amended. 
He says, if you put on the garment of praise, I'll lift the heaviness. So you either put on the garment of praise or stay heavy. Many of us are in a gym, come closer, spiritually, trying to get natural weight off us. And the challenge is, we're not just naturally out of shape. We spiritually obese. And your hands cannot lift the hell that you have invited in your life. But if I can get 10 people to say and to testify, every moment that I put on praise, it seemed like what was heavy got lighter. Help me. I begin to shout in the middle of depression. I begin to scream in the middle of anxiety. I begin to turn that doctor's office out when they told me that I had cancer. I turn that out. How many more times does God have to heal us from an infirmity for us to say, Father, I will not doubt your hand. The challenge is, challenge is, challenge is be seated. The challenge here is Alana, Ayana, Alana. Okay, I'll get there in a second. The challenge is, the challenge is we let the path beat us up. We let Monday through Saturday beat us up. How many more times are y'all going to let the devil cheap shot y'all and y'all not talk y'all kingdom language? How many more times are you going to say ouch instead of I shall? Does this make sense to anybody? Okay. It says, so truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. Hmm. I got to pause here. And because I'm a nerd, the father knew over thousands thousand of years ago that we would have this conversation today. So, so he allowed Mark to write S-E-A. So he says, okay, cool. So I know that somebody in English is going to create the word S-E-E. So he says, let me do a play on words to really show them how my wisdom supersedes your understanding. He says, take the mountain and put it into the sea. And if you put your mountain into the sea, then you can't see it no more. Don't sanitize the text. It's, 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 it's in there. He says, you send it to a place to where you can't see it. Why? Because it's stopping you from seeing me. Y'all don't believe the Bible. And if you put, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you put rock in water. Eventually that, that rock is going to dissolve. Not only is it going to sink. It's going to eventually dissolve because its natural habitat is to be above water. So he says, put it in an environment. I'll dissolve it while you continue to look at me. Ask your neighbor, which way are you looking? Let me move. I'm almost done. I want to talk to us about the conversations we're having with ourselves about where we're going and where we are. Be taken up and thrown into the sea. He says, if you do not doubt in your heart, <clears throat> but if you believe what he says, it will be done for you. I want to say this with all love. Y'all know I love y'all. Okay, great. What an exit door. Hey, you got me. You gonna. I... Y'all did say yes, right? Okay, all right, cool, cool. The reason why you're not seeing what God has promised you is because you're not holding up your end of the bargain. It's not anybody else, it's not your trauma. You're not following his instructions because when he puts pressure on you your truth comes out 
I'm not saying that what you're going through does not hurt. I'm not saying that what you're going through is fair. I'm saying it is unfair. I'm saying it does hurt. I am saying that it has taken people before you out. But the law of exception says what happens to you is not guaranteed to happen to me. Because your father was an alcoholic does not mean that you have to be an alcoholic. Because your mother had 12 kids does not mean that you got to have 12. What if God created you to change the narrative? We call those generational curse breakers. We talk about demons, witches, warlocks, sage. We're talking about putting chicken heads in the grass and blood in the spaghetti. And we talk about putting, putting undergarments in the front yard. Come on. Come on here. We're talking, ain't we? But how about this? To be a curse breaker, you got to have six, six, six cents to make the decision to not attach your thinking to the cursed mind. I ain't mad at your cup of wine with your steak, but I am looking at you very crazy when you got three 12 packs sitting next to your bed right on top of your bills. You are showing God that you have no faith in me. The God that I serve is a fourth quarter. He'll turn the eviction into a closing. He'll turn overdraft into overflow. When God get ready to do it, I need somebody to shout, he gonna do it. I gotta spend 15 minutes explaining and encouraging. Be seated, please. I gotta spend 15 minutes encouraging you in the middle of the hell you in. Because you think that it is devil induced. Huh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all all right? What you are going through is not devil induced. Can I tell you what it is? It is destiny development. Only three people said something. I, I like this side. The reason why it hurts the way it does because if God sent the harvest today, you would fumble it. What is he doing? It hurts really bad. He's getting your weight up. Tell somebody next to you, get your weight up. Stop crying so doggone much. Get your weight up. Every time I see you, <laughs> stop, get your weight up. I like that. Get in the weight room. What is my, I don't have membership at Move. I, I can't afford herbal life. If you can't do any of that, you need to get a prayer life. What is the, what is the weight room? The war room? What is that? Find you a space in your life that is consecrated and say, Father, it's, I'm honest here. I'm Hezekite. I'm drunk as a skunk, but I still need supernatural intervention. And what happens is, when God puts his holy hand on your bed, the sashes are fill up now. When he puts his sovereign hand on your unholy decisions, he says, I will redeem the time. Yes, sir. I will sanctify the decision. I will sanctify the mind. And watch this. I will reintroduce you to greater. Somebody shout, I need the greatest, the greatest, the greatest. Get your weight up, city of hope. Help be seated, please. He'll redeem your time, which means that this, he'll reintroduce you to your decisions. 
which means that he's going to give you an opportunity <laughs> to choose the God choice this time. I want you to tell yourself, don't fail the test. Don't fail. Don't fail. Don't fail. I know you like it. I know you love it. I know what it does to you and for you. Pick you up. Turn you around. Place your feet on unsolid ground. Yes, it will. Don't fail the test. When God recycles, when God, hear what I'm saying. When God recycles the opportunity to fail, before you make a decision, come on Wednesday night. Before you make a decision, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. The same him that just told you, have faith. How long is faith and doubt going to fight? Come on, come close. It's all right, come closer. How, lo how long is faith and doubt going to fight? How many more times are you going to walk past that vision board and do nothing? How many are, how many times, how many more? Can I pout for a second? How many more affirmations do you have to write on a sticky note and put on your mirror before you to walk in the affirmation? At some point, man, I, I really, breakfast foods is coming out of my, Cereal box body. Here it is. How many more times do you have to come out of affirmation into demonstration? How many more times do you got to speak it before you be it? Y'all get distracted so fast. Thank God two more people walked in the sanctuary. Amen. Okay, back to the message. How many more times do you got to open the word and say, and, and, and read it says I shall and you still say, I might not can't. You insult God when you pray and then doubt. What you talk to me for? Words matter. The Miranda writes is prophetic if you think about it. Some of y'all need the feeling of the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all need them tongues because your English stuck. And how about this? Some of you all need those tongues because you've gotten comfortable in a, in a season less than God's preference. Comfort is not God's preference. Y'all don't like this gospel today. I pray the Holy Ghost makes you uncomfortable. Good enough is not great enough. Y'all don't believe it. Why? Greater is he. He's already attached himself to what he is. He's not good. He's not awesome. He is what? You know that mean? I'm almost done. What's crazy is I haven't even started here. All right. Um, be taken up. Don't touch it. Be seated. Have a seat. Good old Brian Johnson. Jr. He said, but if you believe in your heart, I want, I want to have a very brief talk because this week is going to be a very interesting week. It'll only be challenging if you don't follow the instructions. So it should be an easier week than last week. <laughs> it, oh, what, wait, y'all clapping too early because you haven't heard one instruction yet. If God told you, watch this, watch this, because he's, he's the type of God that will tell you to sacrifice your son on a mountain. J just to see if you're going to be like, no, that's my only son. I can't give you what. He said, if you obey me, then I'll put a ram in the bush. The reason why 90% of y'all are not going crazy right now it's because what you don't know, if you study the location of that scripture, rams ain't even supposed to be there. Sausage McMuffin body, let's, let's move. Here it is. 
<sighs> I want you to go through this week sweatless. We're in a series talking about wordplay. Wordplay is gunplay. Last week we were talking about the idea of Russian roulette. Uh, what is the bullet in your gun? What is, what, like, what kind of gun are you? Like, are you a 22 because you got no prayer life? Oh so you can hurt a squirrel? Oh uh, okay, let's stop there. The truth of the matter is, you're not fighting squirrels. You're fighting oxen. You're fighting elephants. And your prayer life is equivalent to a 22. You remember that episode of Harlem Nights? Y'all shouldn't have even been watching that movie. That movie full of curse words. But y'all save people, ain't it? Definitely my favorite movie. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> Glory to God. They in full-fledged warfare. They got to put a kickstand to hold up their gun. And Junebug over here got this little squirrel shooter. And at, watch this. Your community should be so mad with your prayer life. Until when they're praying and travailing and they're fasting. And you over here with this baby peace shooter. Your community should kick you in your mouth. And say, Stop shooting that little junk. I ain't even knew my leg could do that. I'm not going to do it again though. Then gain it back, please. <laughs> Again, your community should look at your prayer life and be like, that junk lame. You got to hold that prayer life and that real life accountable. All right. So again, just before I let you go and talk about me and your cause, it's okay. Look, I love you anyway. Y'all said y'all love me, right? Don't switch up now. Don't switch up. Hold what you got. I want to talk to you I want to read this. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. He's telling you what to say. And he says, if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Him is not a gender-based word. It is a species word. It's like man, which is mankind. So if you do not understand the Bible, you'll be thinking that women can't wear pants. If, if you don't know the Bible, then you say that women can't preach. When the woman was the first person to carry the gospel. That's why women are 80% of the working hand in church. Husbands, if you ever want to see God work in your life, shut your mouth and assign your wife. <laughs> Women, y'all should have been flipping chairs like, that's my pastor. <laughs> Husbands, the reason why you broke and crazy looking is because the Bible says man found the wife, found the good thing, and obtained a favor before the Lord. The reason why you not sing better is because you got your favor in the cage. Yeah. Okay, shouting wise. How about this? The Bible also says submit. Not whether you agree with your Applejack head. He says submit. Whether you understand it, like you married him. He didn't he didn't get done when you said I do. He big. You can flip. Raw, toot, dude, cook, clean, wash, and wipe. They is that same thing that I do. Don't change them. It enhances it. Hey, y'all still love me, right? Submit. Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. You love your business more than your wife. That's why she ain't giving you none. Any children in here? We need to get them. These marriages are failing because y'all not doing y'all part. 
a childhood. Why you get married with a bumped up childhood? Heal before you hump. Let's have church now. Y'all clapping, but y'all ain't stopping humping, though. To our virtual audience, God bless you. I promise you we really love God. I'm just tired of praying with y'all. I need somebody to shout, make that hump holy. Y'all, see. Holy hump. Help me, holy go. Dad, I'm sorry, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hello. Hey, Dad. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> you, you, you technically can't beat me no more. I'm, I'm 35. Y'all got me in trouble. <laughs> Fool with y'all. I want you to have total pout tray play. I'm done. Turn up something. Can y'all go to Bishop after church and be like, don't get him. He, he means well. <laughs> Might help me out, but you got my back? Okay, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> Heal and hump. Okay, all right, no. If y'all really about this life, post it and tag the church. Heal before you hump. Because what you're doing, women, I don't, why am I here? Why am I, Why? It is because watch this everybody ain't doing that right but there are people that are dealing with the repercussions of having intimate exchanges with unhealed people so again your wife ain't crazy you just unhealed your husband he got a lot going on he just unhealed how about this where's the grace for the brokenness does this make sense? So it says, but if you believe in well, what you say will come to pass. This is what I want to give you. If you want full control of your exchange with other people, how many of us need that? Because what people say does matter to us. Come on, be honest. It's not just. Thank. What people, what people say matters especially the people you love you want their affirmation but they can't affirm something they've never seen before they can't affirm something they've never been responsible accountable let's have church successful you are seeking advice from unsuccessful people if your mama if your I'm gonna just be honest if your mama got had 13 husbands why you go to your mama for relationship advice because that advice is just as broken as she is. If your daddy can't keep a job, why would you ask him for financial advice? If the person you love don't have a window or a pot, why would you invite nothing into something? And when nothing shows up, you're like, well, now wait a minute. Now what I have is going down. Yeah, because you are loving a leech. It ain't rocket science. It's prayer talk. This makes I, hope, I really hope this is helping somebody today. Y'all done took me way off my little notes here. I want to leave you with my sermon's discourse today. Talks about we want to wordplay with words and wordplay is gunplay. Wordplay is purpose play. So we got to figure out what is our language to the level of where God expects us. And many of us are having a conversation that has become even more intimate than a conversation. Some of us believe what the enemy is saying. And you can say, no, I don't believe it. When you consider it, you are thinking about it. If, if, if you're not rebuking it and destroying it, then you are contemplating, is this true? Will I ever make it out of this? Will I ever encounter better? What you're really saying is God true? 
is I want you to have full control over the narrative between you and other people. Do you want that? Talk to me. Do you because I don't want to give it to you if, if you can't use it. Do you want for talk to me? Yes. Do, they say the words, you assign the weight. You should already be taking off people's words. When you share your dreams with people, but they don't agree with it, but they turn around the next week and do what you said that you're about to do. I just, I just shared with you without, without my dream. Here it is. You got to stop loving dream thieves. You got to evict dream thieves. And the reason why many of us are so depressed, so frustrated, so insulated in issues is because we stopped believing our dreams. Somebody told you that the dream stopped when you woke up. But when you really got the word from God, the dream is only the pass down. When I wake up, it's time to get to work. So the whole sticks and stones may think, yeah, it sounds good, but it's a literal lie. Because if people don't down you, when you got purpose, you will enter seasons when you down yourself. How many of us will be honest and say, we've looked in the mirror and said, nah, this is too big for me. I ain't ready for this. That is a lie. We honor the axiom, but we disagree with the expression because it's not true. Words do hurt. Why do words hurt so much? Even if you don't like the person, what they said still resonates because you feel after they talk. Whether you get mad, whether you cry, whether you pout, whether you post, whether you scream, whether you cuss. Words do hurt. Why? Because words matter. So after you hear, after you experience, what do you say back? So here it is. Today, today's all of this was about one thing. If anybody asks you, what was the preacher's subject? You tell them. A tongue kiss with trauma. A tongue kiss with trauma. Let me make it make sense. When you have become intimate with doubt, you are tongue kissing with trauma when you are considering what the enemy is suggesting and your prayers are like are saying that maybe maybe just maybe you are having an intimate exchange with trauma the reason why you cannot heal in the way that you are supposed to heal is because after you get this good old Sunday morning feeling between the car and your bedroom you have a conversation with opposition you have a conversation with that you let doubt whisper in your ear you got doubt in the right ear you got the devil in the left ear and you got your vision board in front of you and you're trying to figure out which which one who who do I listen to that's why it's important that to hear clear, you got to go. Because as dirty as that devil is, yes, sir, as, as, as conniving and as cunning as the devil is, he can't survive in prayer air. I need somebody to understand that. If you want to get away from what the devil is saying, Get into some prayer air. Help me, I feel the Holy Ghost. What is that? Create an altar wherever you are. Go down into prayer air. Because the only, only, watch this, only holy things can survive in that air. Only sacred things can survive in that air. I'm done here. 
thought I heard somebody say Bible me over here. Since you said it, let's do it. When John is writing his gospel, he uses the word word. Preachers, here's where you get out of charismata and you get into exegesis. You let go of eisegesis for a second and you tell the people what the Bible says. He used the word word. Somebody shout word. He uses that weapon to describe God. Woo! Come on, let's walk this text here. Out of all of the things that God could have called himself, he chooses to call himself a word. Okay, John 1, because I don't want to assume that you know it. John 1 says, in the beginning was the... Okay, let's do this. Let's do this together. I point, you say word. You got it? In the beginning was the... And the... Was with God. And the... Was God. Okay, that's... That's not where I started shouting. I started shouting here. It says... He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, capital H. And without him, capital H, was not anything made that was made. So before you try to figure out energy and, and rocks and sands and stones and, 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 and hieroscopes and bioscopes and detroscopes and hermoscopes and all of these other scopes, what you think created the scope? It wasn't energy. It was the... It was the word. In him was life. Woo! Help me. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So if, you, if there's any dark area in your life, then you are absent of the. My God. Some of you are one away from winning. Some of you are one away from being healed. Some of you are one from being delivered. Some, some of you are one away from your next level. I need somebody to shout, I need a word. I don't need another plan. I need a, I don't need another friend. I need a, I don't need another doctor's report. I need a, give me the, I need the, you need the, send the, Hold on, Trey. I'm ready. You can stay standing. I'm done. He said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light, it says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome yet. So wherever you invite the word, you will always win. Wherever you invite the there will always be light. This is the thing. Here it is. How are you going to respond when he turns the light on for you? You don't get to close your eyes when the light turns the light on. Yes, sir. Because when he turns the light on, he's showing you the truth. In the beginning was the. And the word is saying, this is the warfare. This is the enemy. He said, I'm putting the spotlight on you. I'm putting the spotlight on your decisions. I'm putting the spotlight on your lifestyle habits. I'm putting the spotlight on your faith because you asked me and then you doubted me. I'm offended. You pray, you, 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 you know, you do these devotions 365 days to make yourself feel like a Christian. Y'all are playing with the Bible. What's the point of doing the devotion if you're not going to become a disciple? Come on, discipleship. What's the point of doing the devotion if you're not going to turn into a disciple? He said that the word, I like this, the word became flesh. The articulation became a manifestation the sentence became a savior y'all are behind the shot the weapon became our father 
this thing should be hitting a little harder than what it's doing. What 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 died came back to life. I said what died came back to life so that you can have the right to grace to get it wrong and to bounce back, to make the decision and to bounce back. Because all I need to do is to speak a and the shows up for me. I pray your heart is convicted. I pray that you assess what you've been given God and you feel bad about it. I pray Holy Ghost conviction insulates you and cannot hide. I pray that you have the conversation with yourself. Who am I when nobody sees me? Who am I when I'm not away from church? Is my mouth filthy or is it prophetic? What's in my refrigerator? What's in my phone? What's in my mind? What's in my heart? I pray that the Holy Ghost tears your behind up. Why? Because I want you to experience God two places. In the land of the living and the, in the internal resting of the sleep. The word became flesh. That's why you still. Does this make sense to anybody? That means we got to change kissing partners. Y'all are tongue kissing with trauma. When you converse with the thing that's overwhelming you, you are being intimate with the enemy. And you won't see different until you kiss something else. Hada behind the Hear the heart of the prophet and the pastor today. You got your lips on the wrong thing. God said, I'm, I'm trying to find a space on your calendar, but you're too busy. You're too booked to have a conversation with me until I begin to wreck everything that's in front of me. He will wreck that business. He'll wreck that relationship because the Bible says he is a what? Jealous God. He's jealous. He has feelings too. He's jealous. He's sick and tired of the thing that he gave life, choosing to do life with somebody else. He's sick and tired of the thing that he gave life, breathed breath into the body, trying to build something else, but not building the kingdom of God. And what you have is limited to what you could have. Please hear the heart of the prophet today. Anybody seeking for something today? Let me see your hand. Pastor Bruce, how do I find what I'm seeking? The Bible says, seek ye first. Lord have mercy. The kingdom of heaven. And all of these things. If you are in a season where you are experiencing some traction, seek the kingdom. Word became flesh, the articulation became a manifestation. I'm done. The logos, logos, somebody shout logos. The thought became a thing. Visionaries, entrepreneurs, leaders, disciples, God is showing us contextually that your thought is supposed to turn into a thing. A real thing. A big thing. And when you under the umbrella of Yahshua, it becomes a God thing. He don't want you just doing something. Leave that to the common folk. But for the believers, we should be doing God things. enemy is so cunning he knows that if he messes with your resources because your resources have been your God your savers account has been your savior your EBT card has been your increase open up this church your business acquisitions 
have been the connectivity to your anointing. So when that business fails, your faith fails. When that idea don't pop, then your faith drops. When you find yourself in, in, in diverse situation where your resource can't get you out of, you take that walk of shame back to the altar. But the Father says, there's no walk of shame back to me. Come on. He says, there's no walk of shame to holiness. There's no walk of shame to my presence. Because if you had to be ashamed about something, you should know that I watched you do it. I watched you. Please bear with me. I, I would love to get us out in efficient time, but I got to give you this. I would love... I, in his presence is the fullness of joy. Now you got to understand the Bible to understand the weight of that text, Marcus. He's not giving you happiness. He's not giving you strength. He's giving you something called joy unspeakable. It's different. That's a different kind of joy. A check would give you a natural joy. That's why the old song, now we can't discredit it, it said, this joy that I have, because the world didn't give it, you have no permission to take it back. But they can ask for it and you can give it. Does this make sense? I want to tell you that we're having traumatizing and purpose capping conversations with ourselves. He says, speak to the mountain, which is a metaphor for structures, systems, flesh, cousins, aunties, boss, jobs. This is what I like. Mindsets. He says, speak to your mind, cast it into the sea so that you can no longer see in your mind what you would normally see. If you win the battle in your mind, you will win the battle of life. I can do 38 backward flips and scream everything 16 times. But if you do not eat ye, then you won't see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Some of you are in this game called our journey. And you got the power of God sitting on the bench. If you ever, if you ever watch basketball, you'll know that to sub a player in the game, they got to go check in. I don't know what you call that space, but they usually take the knee and they put say, I'm, I'm going in. Let me prophesy to every last one of you. God is waiting on you to bring him into the game. After you get done clapping, start making the decision to sub them in. Come on, be accountable. Because the moment you sub him in, he starts working. This week has to be a week of tough conversations. If it don't work for God, it won't work for you. Father, share with me that marriages are failing and people are lying. Y'all are lying about being happy. To the, to, to the single, you're lying about being saved and satisfied. To the anointed, you are lying about being anointed and ready. You're not. Father, reveal it now. Our faith needs to meet our ask. Does that make sense? When you ask God for stuff this week, ask him and do not doubt in your heart. Because the words you speak will reveal what and who you are intimate with. Let's pray for each other. Father, as you release us, to be the hands and the feet of your word. 
Father, release us from those kisses that could be contaminating us. Father, release us from those exchange of, exchanges of intimacy that no longer feed us. The nutrients that you would have us to have. Father, I pray divine conviction. And just before it turns into condemnation, Holy Spirit, I pray that you show us your love language. Father, be present for us. Be forever be considerate of us. Fa Father, grace us to get up. Father, grace us to make the decision. And even if it's not your decision, Father, we thank you that you did not let it consume us when we were not concerned about you. Father, I pray for a new start. I pray for a freshness. Father, I pray now that you continue to do your God work in our lives. And we give you glory, honor, and praise.